By the end of this tutorial, you can create this halftone. You don't have to have it uh, running at 12 frames. I just thought it looked a little bit better. Uh, but as you can see here, you can run at 24, whatever frame rate. Uh, I just thought that the 12 frames kind of fit this a little bit better. It doesn't have to be video. You can also do this with images. But uh, yeah, let's get started. So we're going to go right into Fusion and have our Fusion Comp here. You could just put a clip on the timeline and go directly in. But I'm going to uh, create a Fusion Comp and we're going to bring in our video. And so here is our video, right? Our cool video there. Uh, the other thing that we're going to uh, be creating now is the dots. So to create the dots, we're going to first bring in a background, come over to image. We're going to hit uh, to undo the auto resolution and then just do 50 by 50. And if I view that there, it's just a little square. And let's grab a rectangle mask. And the rectangle mask, we're just going to go at 45. Whoops, let's go 45, there we are. And then in the rectangle as well, we're going to change the softness to 0.25, there we are. Now we want this to be able to mirror, so let's set that up. So we're gonna click on our rectangle here. We're gonna copy it and paste it, so Commander Control uh, C and then Commander Control V and we're just going to put it in all four corners. So I'll bring this one down here. I'll just zoom out here for a sec. Bring it down here. This is going to be zero, zero. So you can see we're pretty much zero, zero. So let's just zero that out. Now we're just going to copy and paste that again and put in a one here. Copy and paste again, put a one over here. Copy and paste again, make this one a zero. So now we have it in all four corners. Next, let's grab another background. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dots and put it on top of this background. So we're gonna go from here and go on top of that. If we view this, you're not gonna see anything because we have to change this background color. So let's change this to white. And so there we are. I wanna just go full size so we can see that. And now in this merge here, uh, we're just going to click on the merge and go to edges and mirror. So there are all of our dots. We're going to zoom this out. But first I want to explain what's going to happen here. So as we can see, this is all blurry. And if you look at the values that are right down in here, we can see that they you know, gradually become more and more, right? Or excuse me, less and less, right? Because white is going to be full everything. So depending on what we're gonna mix those two, so the image and this, and that's going to state if in a uh, dot is on or off, and depending on how much white or black is here, it's also going to dictate the size of the dot because they're going to average out the, uh, the values of both images, and the, if, it's, if there's a lot behind, then this dot will get bigger, if it's very bright behind, the whiteness will take over the dot a little bit. Um, without getting too nerdy, that's probably as nerdy as I'm going to get. Uh, all right, so let's just take all of this and then command control G. We'll just turn that into a group. Now let's come back over to our shot here. We can see that this is way too big for our project. If we click on one of our other backgrounds, uh, we can see that our project resolution is 19, 20, 10, 80. So I'm going to resize this shot here to match. So to do that, I'm just control shift, and we're just going to type in here, resize, there we are. And now our shot is 1920, 1080. Uh, I believe that it's four by three. Okay, it really isn't. So let's just, uh, we'll just bring in a background instead and put the background on top of this and now view this and we'll just zoom this out. Okay, there we are, right. so that looks good. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we need to turn this image uh, black and white. So to do that, we're just going to grab a color corrector and we'll just feed that into the color corrector. We'll view the color corrector over here and we'll just turn saturation way down. Now we'll, we might need these other controls here depending on how the image is. Every shot's gonna be a little different depending on the camera and all the settings used, yada, yada. Uh, but for now, we can just easily 
uh, we're just going to take our dots and put it on top of our uh, shot here. So from right from the dots to this color corrector, now we have, oops, let's just go like that. All right, so now we're just viewing this merge here and we can see that we just see the dots. So let's go into this blend and we'll turn the blend down like halfway, something like that. Now we can see that we have both of these. So now let's have it actually um, control the size of these dots. And so to control the size of the dots, we're going to bring in a brightness contrast node and we're just going to connect that up just like that. And in the brightness contrast node, we're gonna take our gamma and go to zero and we're gonna take our uh, gain and go to two. And let's actually view this. And we're almost there, but we have like crazy numbers here. We can see we have infinite. So we're just going to clip this as well. And now we're looking pretty good. We're got, you know, this dual tone kind of going here, or excuse me, a uh, half tone going here. Uh, one thing we'll do is we'll just change the size of these dots down a little bit so we have some more dots. And so as you can see there, that's looking pretty good. If you did want to adjust your shot a bit, uh, you could come back over here into your uh, color corrector and you could maybe reduce the contrast or move this around until you kind of get a shot that um, is looking a bit better um, for whatever, you know, it is. So that's what we're gonna kind of go with for now. Um, maybe make these a little smaller. All right, so that's uh, looking pretty good. From here, what we can do is we can go directly into, um, let's go into a blur node, right? Just to soften it up just ever so slightly, I feel like then it makes it look a little bit better. We still are just maintaining dots, but overall, I feel like the shot uh, just looks a little bit better. Let's uh, make these a little smaller. Okay. All right, so this is looking all right. I feel like this blur is just maybe a little too much. So let's go like 0.4. So slightly less. Uh, the next thing that we can do here is let's go into here and let's just get some colors going. So let's go into, let's add a background, oops. Let's add a background node in. We'll go directly into that. And let's switch this to luminance and we will invert that. And now we can change the color of these dots. I think I'm just going to do pretty much just a little off. Um, so it's not completely black. And then let's also make a piece of paper a little off white, and then we'll add them together. And there we are. I feel like that's looking pretty good. All right. All right, so now the only other thing we really would need to add at this point is if you did wanna do a color pass on here, we could quickly do that, and I'll show you how to do that. So coming out of this merge, because that's when we went down to 1080, we will just grab a magic mask and this is just to create a mask, it's nothing else. So if you do not have access to magic mask, you could just draw one with a spline tool. So you can come up here and then you would just be able to, you know, go around your guy like that and create your mask. But because I have magic mask, I'm just going to use it. So we'll come in here and we will grab our guy like this, right? Nice long lines really showcasing the person. There we are, that's looking good. Now, if I only wanted this shot to not move so we don't have to track it, like if we were adding this to, let's say a news article and we needed this guy's face, so we didn't need the motion of the video, we were just kind of trying to get this aesthetic. What I personally would do is I would grab a bitmap, I would go into a bitmap like this, so we just have this image and then I would save this. I would right click, save image. From here, I'm just going to type in mask and we're gonna switch this. I would just grab a Fusion Raw image. I mean, you could really put whatever you want, but we'll just do that, right? So we'll save our image and now we just have to go to our image. And as you can see how tiny that file is, right? So that would be probably great to just use. So now we'll just use that. So I'll just disconnect this magic mask 
so it doesn't have to run anymore. And then off of this, we can go right in and let's grab a color. So now we have our guy. All we would need to do is these are our dots. We want our dots over top of this color and then back into here. Now let's actually view this and there we are, right? So now we have our guy. If you do want the motion, track everything with the uh, magic mask and then that would be fine. Uh, but if you wanted it to be still, you could do this. And then if we wanted to maintain this video to be still, uh, we could do, uh, I believe it's speed, time speed. No, it's not time speed, time something, time stretcher. Yeah, that's what it is. It's time stretcher. We'll just un uncheck this and then type in the frame number. So we're at 115 currently. Whoops. And so now every frame will be frame 115, right? So now we have it staying at just that frame. Uh, from here, the only other thing that I thought was kind of cool is if you offset the color, right? So like if the printer was misaligned uh, or plates. Um, so we just put the tr a transform in here. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. And we would just, you know, offset that slightly. I felt that that was kind of cool. Kind of gives that like, okay, maybe not that much, but gives that like cool aesthetic, right? Uh, from here, all we would then have to do is just go media out. Now we're on the edit page. Uh, as far as saving this and using it again, um, this stuff with the, if you're doing another color, would have to be done for every project, right? With the mask, obviously, that would have to be um, done again. But the rest of the stuff, so this stuff right here, this could all be turned into a macro and then you would have a halftone macro that would work pretty well. I would just show off um, this one, right, to change the dot size. And then I would also show off in the merge, I would show this blend because the blend is going to dictate the strength of our dots, right? So depending on how many dots we want and where we want it to be stronger. So that would be that. Uh, the other thing too, I didn't say this, I guess, if we just want it to just not have all of this other stuff, because we have this mask here, what we could do is it, all of these dots are coming down into here, into here, is we could connect this over here, right? We connect that over there, and now we just have just this guy. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I think that pretty much concludes making this uh, effect. I guess one little thing I can throw in here is, let's say you wanted to turn this into a title card of some sort. So I'll just put in here some words. Uh, if I connect this up here, we're gonna have to reverse those. So we'll just do a quick switch, Control T. Let's change this color. Um, and then we have to click on the little guy over there and then we can make this bigger. Let's do that. So there we go. We can turn this into a title card of its own. I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, let's get a similar color to what we were working with. There we go. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, all you really need is just this stuff over here to make the half tone. But uh, the rest of the stuff, if you want it to look something similar to this. So hopefully you guys learned something in here. Uh, I highly suggest taking a look at Post Pro List. If you haven't yet, you can share your projects over there. Ask me questions directly about Fusion or DaVinci Resolve. But until the next one, guys, have a good one.